and bold, fight as the same to nobly fought of old, and win with them the victor's crown of gold. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
On this day, when we celebrate all saints, we remember with thanksgiving those of our congregation who have gone before us with faith, for they were created by God the Father, redeemed by Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Spirit through baptism, where God gave them new life. They have been nourished in this community through the Lord's Supper and the hearing of the Word. In His mercy, God has summoned them to His presence where they await the resurrection of all flesh. So in joyful expectation of that resurrection to eternal life, we name those who are in our hearts and minds this day, especially Pat Ruark and Carl Nordquist. We pray. Almighty God, We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 7. In these verses, John has a vision of the worship that is presently ongoing around the throne of God. Not only angels and archangels, but all the company of heaven, including those we love who have died in the faith, are gathered around worshiping our God as we do ourselves this morning. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. 
The angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. He said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Our epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3. And as John writes to his congregation, he points us to the hope that is ours. We are God's children now, yes, But there is something even greater in store for us when we will be like him, seeing him as he is. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. that We should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gospel. epistle reading we just heard, John points his people forward with hope to the life that will be theirs when Christ returns. In many ways, that's a commentary on what Jesus promises this morning as he's blessing not only his disciples, but the crowds and us as well. The things he says are blessed really don't seem very blessed to us, being poor in spirit, mourning or meek or those who are persecuted. But we are blessed because we have hope. And the promises of Jesus, they will be fulfilled in Christ. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Christ. You may be seated.
pleading, never that full joy conceived. God has promised Christ prepares it, there on high our welcome waits. Every humble spirit shares it, Christ has passed the lives who once was dead. Shout with joy, O deathless voices, child of God, lift up your head. Life eternal, O heart wonders, crowd on faith, what joy unknown. When amid its closing thunders, saints shall stand before the throne. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For all the saints who from their labors rest, thee by faith before the world confess, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. That hymn is one of a few that I have a hard time getting through. Especially as we get toward the end, the last verses, the uh, voice kind of tends to break. Tears come in those eyes. One of my favorites that's out there. First of all, the music is great. Written by Ralph Vaughan Williams, a very famous composer in the early 1900s. One of the commentaries I read says, this is one of the finest hymn tunes written by a modern composer. Now, 100 years ago for us, maybe not modern, but when our hymnals go back to 300 years after Jesus, it's, it is modern in the relative sense of the term. But not only does that music just swell and, and sing out, the words that are paired with it are just, just gorgeous. They point us to the past, the saints that have gone before us and are now with Christ, but that, those saints don't just stay in the past. This hymn narrates them into the present to be with us here as we together look forward to what God has in store for all the saints, for you and me as well. But that begs the question, who are these saints? John asks the, the same question as he's having this vision. Uh, he's looking around, sees this tribe, of, uh, this grouping of all tribes and nations, languages, and he, he asks, who are these clothed in white robes and where have they come from? And this, this elder, someone guiding him around heaven, answers him, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They're coming out of the great tribulation. They're dead. They've died. They are no longer living here on earth. Instead, they have come out of this great tribulation. This world that we live in, that is a mess. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Not only are they dead, but they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. As John has this vision of the worship that's taking place around the throne of God, these are those who have died in faith. Those that we know and have loved that died while they were trusting in Jesus for salvation. They're not perfect in and of themselves, not like they've stored up a whole bunch of merit that they now get to dispense to others. No, they have been washed. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They were baptized and made new in Christ. These are the saints that we are remembering this morning. Not just the saints now that, that we think of, uh, all the, the popular ones, but even 
thinking back to the Old Testament. The saints, those who, who died in faith, trusting that there would be a Messiah, a Savior to come. They were saved by Jesus, just as we are. So today we are celebrating Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Ruth, and Boaz, David, Elijah, Elisha, and all the other prophets, even, even someone like Zerubbabel, who's the governor after they come back from exile. In this list of Old Testament saints, we would also include a guy from the New Testament, John the Baptist, as he points us forward to the Messiah, the Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. These Old Testament saints point us to Jesus. But not just Old Testament saints. We've got New Testament saints as well. You've got the apostles as they are sent out by Jesus. Stephen, the first martyr. You've got Philip the deacon as he goes about his work. We heard about Paul and his conversion. Or even the saints that are in Rome or Corinth or Galatia. These people are saved just the same way we are saved by Jesus. Their hope is in Christ crucified and risen. Now, I could go on all day long about uh, church history, all the saints that we could talk about there, but I know I'm short on time, I'm short on attention span, and short on interest. I know that's how that works. But today we are remembering all the saints. Again, this is worth highlighting that this is not the Roman Catholic definition of a saint that you've been beatified and then canonized by doing a certain number of miracles after being prayed to. It's not what we're talking about here. As Scripture talks about saints, these are those who trust in Christ, whether they are living or dead. Paul writes in, in several of his letters to the saints that are in fill in the blank. Corinth or Philippi or Colossae or, or wherever. You and I, and those we love who have believed in Jesus, are saints. And apart from all the, the church history, the New Testament, Old Testament saints, you and I have people that we know of and remember today. Today I always uh, tend to remember my, my grandpa, my mom's father. His birthday was November 1st, All Saints Day, and he died on November 1st, All Saints Day. He had a huge impact on me uh, growing up and, and still does through his generosity and his business acumen. He was a model for me and my whole family of what it means to live as a believer. Not perfect, but washed in the blood of the Lamb. I also remember my, my great-grandfather today. We always called him Bubba. It was Bubba and Nana. He was married four days later, ordained, and sent as a missionary to Nigeria. And I have inherited a lot from him. This is his seminary class ring that I still wear. I wear his stoles. I got books, uh, his books in my library there. Thankfully, one thing I have not inherited is a description of his brother, but it also applies to him. I read this in a, in a newspaper article. Bald-headed and relentlessly roly-poly. <laughs> I've been told I'm not allowed to get to that state. Not perfect washed in the blood of the Lamb. I know there are people on your hearts and minds this morning too. Husband, father, mother, friend, even children who have gone before you in the faith. And today we recognize that death does not have the last word. That those who have died in Christ, they live 
in Him. It says not just some spiritual, oh, their memory lives on in our hearts. No, no. They are with Christ now. As we heard in Revelation, gathered around the throne, singing His praises. These are those who were baptized in Christ. They washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were connected to Jesus' death and resurrection. And when they were connected with Christ, and when you and I are are connected with Christ in baptism, we're connected to each other, not just the living saints in the pew with you, but to those who have gone before us and are with Christ. As John describes it, these are those from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, nameless saints who we will never know this side of eternity. You are united with them through baptism. You're united with them now even as we worship. You notice as we go through our our service every week, there's little scripture references off to the side. This is where we get this. We speak scripture to each other. We sing scripture to each other. And as we heard this morning in Revelation, we use even the, the words of worship that are presently ongoing in the throne room of God. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Shuffle those around, put it to music, and you get blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. Sing that, our great, this is the feast. When we sing those words, we are singing the song of praise around the crucified and risen Lamb. We are using the words that those you love who have died in the faith are now singing to Christ who lives and reigns to all eternity. You're united with Christ, your baptism. You're united to Him in our worship. And you're united with Him in Christ's death and resurrection given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And now, as we gather around this throne of God where Jesus feeds us Himself, we're united not only with Christ, not only with each other at the rails, but with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. And all the company of heaven includes those you love who have died in the faith. It's a reason that, that our communion rails are curved. You know, we've got kind of sharper angles along the way, but this is a traditional layout for these communion rails. We are a fraction of this great circle around the throne of God. And if we could see beyond these walls, we would see the patriarchs and the prophets and the apostles, the evangelists, and your parents, and your grandparents, and that dear friend is no longer here. When we receive Jesus here, when we're united with Christ, we're united with all those we love who have gone before us in Christ. And we know how the story ends. Death is not the end of the story. It's not as if we bury someone, wash our hands, all right, move on to the next. We believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. These bodies will be raised. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Peter, Paul, all those saints will rise. Along with your mom, with your grandpa, and with all those who belong to Christ. On the last day, he will raise me and all believers and give eternal life to me 
and all those who belong to Christ. Which means that even now, we have hope. No matter what happens on Tuesday, we know who reigns supreme. No matter how your test turns out, be it a positive or negative result, or maybe if you're a kid in school, a pass or a fail, we know how the story ends. Whether you are healed this side of eternity or the next, you belong to Christ. And He will raise you from the dead. Yes, we will be with all those we love. There will be a countless throng. But it's not about who we're with, at least humanly speaking about who we worship. It's about who it is that unites us to himself. In whose name we're baptized. In whose blood we are washed. Who receives the glory and honor and power and might. It's all about Christ. As great as all of this connection is, Lo, there breaks a yet more glorious day. The saints triumphant rise in bright array. The King of glory passes on His way. Alleluia, alleluia. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of pearl streams in the countless host, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue in our service together by standing and confessing our faith, the faith of all those who have gone before us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Thank you for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you've done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. And as we head to the polls this coming Tuesday, Lord, we ask that your will would be done, trusting that no matter who ends up in office, that you reign supreme, and that you will one day come to judge the living and the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us all hatred and prejudice and give us the spirit of love. 
order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Joyce, Larry, Dawn, Deb, Greg, and those in our monthly newsletter. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors, especially Carol. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our offering, giving back to God a portion of all that he has given us. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can give offerings to this church. One of those is uh, online. You can either go to our church website or even just scan this little QR code with your phone um, and you can set it up to, to give online automatically. It's not to say so you don't have to think about your offering. We still want to do that, uh, but it makes it so it's a little harder to forget. Maybe that's a better way of saying that, that it comes out automatically and it's a gift to God, a regular giving of all that God has given you that supports what we're doing here as a congregation. So we thank you for that offering. Let's sing as we bring it forward. At this point in our service, Jesus comes to be present with us in this meal where he gives us his very body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Because of the unique nature of this meal, we ask that if you've not been instructed in what it means, if you belong to a church body with a different confession of faith, or if you're unprepared for the sacrament today that's unrepentant or unforgiving of any sins, that you would refrain from taking it. You're always welcome to remain in your seat and sing along with the hymns. Or come forward for a blessing. If that's what you'd like, just cross your arms in front of your chest to let us know. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, You've surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created, and you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Heavenly hosts in ceaseless worship, holy, holy, holy cry. He who is, who was, and will be, God Almighty, Lord Most High. Praise and honor, power and glory be to you.